decide that the things that I tried were in my life just to get high. All right, welcome to our final episode from Chapter 2D, Chemical Reactions and Enzymes. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how our enzymes control. Okay, I want you to review from the previous screencast that enzymes are proteins that act as a catalyst. Catalysts are chemicals that will speed up a chemical reaction by lowering the activation energy. And the activation energy is the amount of energy that's going to be used to get the reaction started. So think of like you're pushing something up to the top of the hill so that they can go down it. Right? Enzymes are proteins that act as a catalyst. And if you can recall from the previous screencast from our Chapter 2C series on proteins and nucleic acids, that an enzyme is by far the most important job that proteins do. Okay, So in this one is, how do we get an, an enzyme to turn on and turn off? So in other words, how do we control chemical reactions in a, in a living thing? Uh, if the enzyme is turned on, the chemical reaction will typically happen. If the enzyme is turned off, the chemical reaction typically does not happen. So how do we turn on and turn off chemical reactions? Well, chemical, or I'm sorry, enzymes can be tr controlled three different ways. One of them is changes in pH. If you remember what pH is, it's a measure of how many hydrogen ions are concentrated in a solution. A pH of 7 is neutral. pHs below 7 are acids. And pHs above 7 are bases. And the farther you move away from 7, the stronger you get. All right. So if I will change the pH of an enzyme, I can actually change its shape and make it not happen anymore. I can do the exact same thing with temperature. Temperature will do the same thing as pH will, drastic changes in pH, but especially higher temperature. Colder temperatures have a tendency just to slow down the molecules. They do not move as fast, and the chemical reaction doesn't occur. But if I can heat it back up, then it'll go back to work. But not so with high temperatures. High temperatures have a tendency to damage the enzyme so bad that it will no longer work. And that is a process called denature. So drastic changes in pH and very high temperature changes will change the shape of an enzyme. And with any protein, its shape determines its function. If you change the shape, you change its function. Now, if you've ever fried eggs, you'll notice that when you crack the egg, it's got this runny, snotty stuff. That runny, snotty stuff is a protein called albumin. When you heat up the albumin, it denatures which is a fancy word that means change shape. It changes its shape. It goes from a runny, gooey liquid to a white solid. So if we have enzymes that are designed to digest proteins or digest lipids in your, in your digestive system, if you had such a very, very high fever that your body temperature got too high, those enzymes would change its shape and you wouldn't be able to digest some of those things. And that's one of the dangers that we have with high fevers. We don't want you to get so high in temp that the enzymes inside your body will fall apart and denature. So I want you to get used to using this word denature. It's just a, a fancy word that means change shape. And if you change the shape of a protein, you have changed its function. All right. Now here's the third one is a very unique way that living things control enzymes. And it's done through chemical, rea uh, chemical regulators. Now these are other chemicals, and they're going to do one of two things. They're either going to block the active site or... They're going to cling to the enzyme in a different location, and they're going to cause the active site to kind of close, so to speak. Uh, they both have the same effect. They're going to turn or turn off the enzyme, but they do it a slightly different way. All right, so let's look at those two types of chemical regulators in the same detail. All right, I want you to pay attention to this graphic. We have two types of chemical reg regulators, and they're going to do what is known as competitive inhibition, and then they're also going to do what is called non-competitive inhibition. Inhibition means to stop. Okay, so you're going to inhibit something, you're going to stop it. All right. In a competitive inhibition, some other chemical will cling to the active site, but the enzyme will not do what it's supposed to do. So think of this as like, it's just a blocker. It's blocked the substrate. Substrate cannot get into the enzyme. The enzyme will not build the, su the substrate into something else, or it won't break it, and so nothing happens. Okay? Now, if you would just remove this inhibitor, now the chemical reaction can occur. Mm -hmm. In your body, um, 
we can often do like the there'll be a molecule that blocks in here and then if there's a slight change in pH this will change its shape it'll fall off and now the substrate can work in but there's other kind of mechanisms that's just one example okay non-competitive inhibition is also known as allosteric a l l o s t e r i c allosteric inhibition and what happens is we have another active site like area on the enzyme and a non-competitive inhibitor will bond to that now once that bonds here the active site changes its shape and that substrate cannot fit okay take that guy away now he can fit in there and you know either be broken or it'll be built together as you can see these two mechanisms do the exact same thing they either they keep the active site and the substrate from getting together this is a little different in competitive inhibition the active site is blocked in allosteric or non-competitive inhibition the active site changes shape pull out the inhibitor back to its regular shape all right um, this is not a super detailed into how this uh, these two ways work but it gives you enough information to see that enzymes can be changed or controlled through three different methods methods and these two are the ones that are used most often in living things competitive and non-competitive inhibition that is going to conclude our three-part series on chapter 2 4 I'm sorry chapter 2 D on chemical reactions and enzyme section 2 4 in your book okay later in this week you will have a celebration of knowledge that covers chapters 2a video 2b 2c and these okay it covers our four menus that we've done so a month work of schoolwork will be on this test very challenging test make sure you study till next time we'll see you later